point is, guys, and of course, ooh, welcome to our draft analysis for Scandinavian Stealthlands, of course, in the TBU Season 4. For those who are new to my channel, you guys should definitely be aware of that outside of the course moon based battles, I'm also, of course, are in different leagues, and TBU is definitely one of the more fun ones, mainly because the overall concept is much, much more different from the likes of UCL or a free drafting concept. Every Pokemon has a different kind of value to them, which makes the um, bit of a drafting process a bit different and definitely makes the games more interesting because, well, you don't necessarily get the overall best variety in your Pokemons. Now, if you follow, of course, TBU on Twitter, you know which exactly which Pokemons I've gotten. But for you that are unaware, I actually will say that I've done some changes for the team, and I will go for a quick rundown of, of course, the Pokemons that I have, of course, picking. So, with really all this said, let's, of course, enjoy the intro for this season, of course, TBU. So if the intro wasn't super obvious, Blastoise is our number one pick or Mega Blastoise specifically. Uh, originally we have Circuitry, but decided to drop that to get some value really out of my draft. Circuitry was really, really interesting, it was definitely one of the first ones I was decided to draft. But my overall uh, draft or bench didn't necessarily get all that much better. Not necessarily getting a few fixes that really needed to be done. And of course Mega Blastoise represented just that. Rapid Spin, Mega Launcher and a big variety of moves makes Mega Blastoise really interesting and also makes some necessarily bored to my team. And uh, yeah, Mega Blastoise overall never used in the league format, and I've seen it with a very, very high success uh, on a amount of people I've seen. Definitely one of them being, of course, Six Fears Hack or Leo, which clearly this mount can definitely take up pleasure of rolls and do them really well with his natural bulk and very, very high special attacks. So Mega Blastoise is definitely our number one pick and definitely the most interesting one to have this season. And for a second, we actually got, of course, Excadrill. And this is actually the first time, being, of course, that most people know me as, of course, the Sandstorm kind of guy. This is actually kind of surprising that I never really actually drafted an Excadrill in any kind of league. And Excadrill is a super, super interesting mod, mainly because it's very, very high attack and, of course, HP. Together, it's a very, very different speed tier, which can take on a pleasure of Pokemon. And, of course, we have the likes of Sandrush, Sandforce, and, of course, Moldbreaker. Making sure that any kind of defensive Pokemon with Levitating Mind will not be able to, of course, deal with, of course, Excadrill really that well. An Excadrill roll gives a very, very high attack power, basically walls and dents any team necessary. Uh, Earthquake and, of course, Iron Head is a very, very powerful combination of stabs. So, Excadrill is a very interesting mod for this kind of season, and uh, I hope overall I will do well with it, quite honestly, because it's definitely one of those Pokemon I feel I haven't tried out enough. Next mod we're gonna pick here is Magnuson, and Magnuson was originally not on the team uh, due to me having circuitry. I was actually dropping, like I said, Jurgazi for, of course, Mega Blastoise and actually Venusaur for, of course, Magnuson. And yeah, Magnuson is probably one of the few here that the really need was super necessary, mainly because I have Excadrill, which is walled by the likes of Scarborough and Celestila. So having a Pokemon that actually can lock them down, so of course, Magnuson is gonna be very, very, very important and that comes together of course any type of tapus that I will be facing throughout this season uh, they all can actually do a plethora amount of damage on any team so having the likes of Magnuson will not only be important but probably crucial for a few of these matchups and of course Magnet Pull and of course Analytics makes this Pokemon really really well rounded and of course the Jericho sets of some Assault Vest or Scarf all of them being very very necessary so Magnuson just basically a fixture for a team that really really needs that for the things that it's walled out by and we're gonna follow that up with, of course, Tyranitar. And yes, what can I say about Tyranitar that hasn't been said before? It supports Excadrill really well, but of course the Sand Rush. Uh, Sandstream alone is a very, very powerful kind of ability, mainly because it actually makes sure that, of course, Tyranitar get a plethora amount of special defense and born to it. But of course, a really high special defense. It is a very, very good pursuit trap where you can set up rocks that has a very, very well, it's dangerous, one should say, special move pull that it could utilize to this knife based special attack, which is actually fairly high for Pokemon of its caliber. And outside of that, well, Dragon Dance, Crunch, Stone Edge, Earthquake, that's a lot of moves going on, together with, of course, the 
optimal C moves, this Pokemon's just how do you say it? Um, potential is just close to limitless. So Tyranitar might not be the greatest variety of Pokemon, but for this team and supporting Excadrill really, really nicely, it might just be one of the more dangerous Pokemon for my opponent's combination to actually be facing. And the next pick is definitely the more interesting one because I've actually had Heracross on my list, but the Bustle was still available, therefore we got it. Uh, I don't know too much about Bustle really outside of, you know, the things I've used on the ladder and of course on my Wi-Fi battles, but one could definitely see the perks of Bustle is of course it's a very high attack and of course defense to get it with a very, very high HP stats. It's a super bulky Pokemon with a very bad special defense and kind of an average below speed tier, but you get access to the likes of, of course Super Power, Hammer Arm, Leech Life, which is going to be super, super important. Ice Punch, Funny Punch, uh, Bulk Up, and of course uh, Roost, which makes this Pokemon a very, very, very tough to deal with. It's very hard to KO and hurts when it comes to retaliation. So I'm definitely looking forward to using Bustle. I think it might be one of the more uh, interesting Pokemon coming out of this generation, mainly because of the combination of the Bug and Fighting, which is a very, very rare combination, which for most have banned from this league. Bustle might just become one of the more superior Pokemon, so I'm very, very glad I got it. And I'm pretty sure it's going to actually help my team quite a lot, mainly because of its very, very high wall breaking capabilities. So, my next draft was basically I needed a fairy type because they, get, they got in kind of scarce, kind of fast. So, I knew exactly which one I wanted, and that was definitely Guard of War. I've uh, been using it for three seasons in different leagues, so I used it once in TBU and with some success. I use it in the LBA, which is not a league I'm doing really well or done really well with in the previous generation. Gardevoir is a very good Pokemon, mainly because of its course combination of Psychic and Fairy, and getting the likes of Healing Wish, Will-O-Wisp, and actually have a very broad supporting move pool with Shadow Ball and Thunderbolt and whatnot outside of its stab. So it's a very interesting Pokemon, it does really well, it gets trick of all the things, and it's a very high special attack, making sure that Scarf Set is a very, very potent one, though the boosting, of course, uh, the boosting uh, defensive set is still very, very interesting. Uh, now, sadly, we do not have the supporting C move activated for this kind of season, which is a bit unfortunate, mainly because it gets hypnosis, which is a very, very interesting C move to use with it. But outside of that, Guard War is uh, a Pokemon I'm really looking forward to. I do believe most Ultra Beasts have troubles dealing with it, and it will really trace that ability, of course, the Ultra Beast Boost, or the Ultra. What's it called? Beast Boost, sorry. Uh, it's definitely going to be helpful. It's going to make sure that Gardevoir is a very big threat for most teams if they don't utilize any type of support except capabilities against it really nicely because Gardevoir can punish any kind of more defensive team mainly because its tracing ability just forced down so many plays so easily. Now the next Pokemon I drafted was actually a Pokemon I've recently got a lot of love for in Generation 6 and that was Jellicent. I never knew how defensively capable this Pokemon were until I actually used it in, of course, another league called the NBA, but also my own league, VPL, where its defensive capabilities use outshines everything. It's a very hard Pokemon to kill, and with, of course, its spin blocking capabilities, it only makes it that much worse. Now, Scald and Burn did get kind of nerfed for this generation, but it doesn't necessarily affect Jellies and that much. That only means they had recovered that much more. But 100 base, and of course, its uh, HP to get with a very high special defense of 105 makes this Pokemon super, super hard to take out just in one hit. And of course, with recovery, it just makes it that much harder. So, Jellicent, super interesting, uh, very broad, kind of weird move pool, which only makes it that much fun to use. And of course, a great speed tier for the defensive team due to being able to learn Taunt. So, um, yeah, not much to it for anybody who has been using it, know exactly what it's all about, and it's definitely one of my overall po favorite Pokemon from previous generation when it comes to battle mechanics and capabilities, so I don't think that is affected that much, and therefore, really looking forward to use it this generation too. So, really, really are hoping that my Necromedusa, or Jellicent, will do well here, and I have a fully trust, and it's a very, very good defensive war type for my team here. Next Pokemon I drafted was Moltres, and that was mainly because I had two Rapid Spinners, I kind of felt that, I, you know, I can do this. Uh, Moltres has something new for this generation, clearly, of course, with a Burnout attack, which is going to be very, very helpful, making this Pokemon a bit more defensive than it already is, where it's not necessarily known for its defensive capabilities, but it can definitely be utilized with, of course, Burnout in action. 
And of course, we have the Sea Move Solar Beam, which also is a factor now with, of course, the blooming attack. Can't necessarily, was it Bloom Doom or something like that? Uh, what I'm trying to say is that we have, don't have to use Power Herb version anymore. We can actually use a Sea Move version, which just makes that attack that much stronger. So Moltres can become very, very viable. It's a very, very specific Pokemon for a specific matchup. But for that combination of fire and flying and still hurt as much as it does with the likes of Hurricane and Fire Blast 1 and 25 special attack, yeah, this thing gonna be super viable for me and I'm definitely looking forward to using it. Now with all this said and done, I didn't have a uh, grass type or a poison type at this point, so Roselia might look a little bit to be drafting and for what it's worth I do understand that. But one has to see to my overall team here. I lack spikes, I lack toxic spikes, I lack a poison type, a stationary one at that, to be able to soak any kind of toxic spikes. Which means Roselia makes sense. Uh, it's not the most defensive Pokemon, it has a very high special attack for being, of course, a middle stage Pokemon. So, uh, Evirolite is always going to be a factor with this kind of Pokemon, but this is, it's very, very good at stacking. It's very, very hard to kill at one hit, and it got recovery, it got decent stabs. So, for what it's worth, it's definitely one of the more niche picks I made, but it also kind of stands out for it that that is probably all I really needed that was left on my team, because the rest of the picks that is going to come to fruition are Pokemon left with, of course, a viewer pick, and, of course, the bench Pokemon for this season. So, with all that said, let's go over the bench Pokemon and my viewer pick. So, at the first bench, we had Alolan Executor. And for what it's worth, guys, thank you for giving me this Pokemon. Wow, I didn't necessarily think I would got it. I actually have Archeops on my team here. I was really hoping I would get Archeops. I really needed something like that. But for what it's worth, Alolan Executor is very, very funny. And while it is benched from the start, I'm definitely looking forward to using this Pokemon, mainly because it's actually not necessarily that shabby. Uh, it learns Flamethrower, which is super, super weird. It has a very, very big variety. It's a Witch Passer for some extent. And uh, yeah, just super weird. I really want to use it mainly because I do believe it's going to make a few of my opponents stretch plex a lot against it because they don't know what they're facing. And you know, look at his stats here. It is a bit of a slower Pokemon, but can set up Prick Room and it's not easily KO'd and has Frisk for ability. So there are a lot of things going for it. So for what is worth, guys, thank you. I'm definitely looking forward to using this. Second bench is Frostlass. I've used Frostlass previous season and um, this was actually previously Mega Glalie, which clearly got dumped because we can have Mega one Mega Pokemon and Blastoise was that. Frostlass is actually just as good, really. Um, lacks freeze try, lack of course offensive pressure, but do have spikes. Gets Willowist this season, has Destiny Bond, it's a great spin blocker, good stabs, learns Thunderbolt, and uh, yeah, just overall, it's a very, very interesting Pokemon, and it's very, very hard to deal with if you're not prepped for it, because it has so many varieties of sets, even though the Focus Sash lead is probably one I'm using Smogon, I want you to know that with, of course, all the other capabilities that Frostlands gets, it could just do that much more work this time around. I didn't use it that much previous season, but with the variety that I'm gonna face this season, Frostlass should do that much better, actually. And uh, yeah, while it's on the bench now, don't expect you to stay there for long. So the last bench Pokemon is Fall or Stoutland. And yeah, the reason it's benched is mainly because, of course, it was a Pokemon I knew no one else would get because they knew that I wanted it, you know, that's my, it's my main mod really, and I've used it in, I do believe, five different seasons in the different leagues, and with really, really big success, and it's not going to end by any chance of the meditation. Uh, Southland has a very, very good variety of what it can do, with of course, like a Scrappy, Intimidate, but clearly Sand Rush is the reason I'm getting it here, even though, like I said, the defensive set is great with Intimidate and, of course, Thunder Wave. Um, it's a super, super strong Pokemon, it was a good bulk, it was a bad special attack, which clearly you're not going to use with it anyway. But you get this, this um, generation actually gets uh, Psychic Facts, I believe. Uh, while not the best move, it's still kind of cool that it gets it. But outside of that, you know, it's a very, very good band user, I really like to use it with that in mind. And if the opponent, of course, lacks, you know, a good Pokemon to kind of soak the hits from Stoutland, then this is Pokemon's going to be there. Uh, it's a very, very abusable, the Return Bandit version is just that much stronger. And of course, combination of Superpower, Crunch, Play Rough. There are so many situations where Stoutland can come out on top, mainly because it's high attack of 110. It's not something to shuffle, it. it definitely does hurt. And I wouldn't call myself Scandinavian Stoutland if I didn't get a Stoutland to my team. 
So I'm really glad I got it. I was surprised that nobody actually was trying to take it. Uh, I was glad too because that means that I got it and I definitely kind of held on a little too long with it, you know, making it the last draft. So I'm really glad that it's on my team. So yeah, overall that's the draft and I really don't have any initial thoughts going on here. Uh, I'm, I think this is a strong draft and I was really, really glad I got a dragon type eventually. Uh, I was aiming for Dragon actually, but it became Venusaur, sadly I should say. But uh, did fix that, of course, getting Frostlass instead and of course uh, Magnuson and Mega Blastoise. And you guys voted for Mega or a <laughs> whole Executor. And yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, I mean, I got the Dragon type, which is awesome. And I really, really looking forward to using a lot of these Pokemon. Mainly because I got so weird Pokemon for this time around. Uh, well, it all, no, all in all, I do have a few Pokemon I've used here before. So, of course, uh, Frostlass, Magnuson, I actually previously. Uh, Jellies and Southland, uh, God of War, Trant are a Pokemon I've used before. But then, of course, we got the only, or actually two Generation 7 Pokemon, we got, of course, Buzzsaw, Alolan Executor, Moltres, Mega Blast, or Zelda, and of course, Excadrill being, of course, completely new for me. So, uh, really looking interested or looking forward to using these kind of Pokemon. And I do believe, considering what I am going to face, and I went, of course, last round, which means I didn't get any type of Pokemon, I really think that I have a, at least opportunity of doing something against them, because that's kind of what's going to boil down to. Uh, we have a lot of, of course, uh, uh, Tapus and UBs that are tough to deal with, and if you go in last, you're not going to get the best out of it. So all you can really hope for is that eventually that you can do something about it, and uh, I do believe the combination of Pokemon I'm using this time around is going to be enough. Uh, I'm definitely aiming to, of course, win the whole league, but, you know, it definitely, you know, just get in final lose that, you know, that's, that's tradition after all. <laughs> I do believe I have five final plays um, situations where I lost. I don't see how this one could turn differently. Um, but with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this list, and of course not list, uh, clearly you know, the draft alone, and I hope you guys are rooting for, of course, because name is Southlands this season. Uh, I'll definitely will be. <laughs> one has to. But yeah, I hope you guys like this team, and uh, if you have any initial thoughts or anything like that, you know, post it down in the comments below. Make sure to check out the other guys, of course, who are actually uploading today with, of course, their team analysis, and what you guys think about them, comment that they support the TBU, right? That's, that's what it all going to boil down to. And we guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching, and I'll see you once the TBU starts, once the Pokemon is open. Until then, we are actually are holding up a little bit. But hopefully that shouldn't be too long. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next video. Other than, of course, take care. Bye.